today, I mean, it's still grotesque in its own special way, but we do have much more accurate capabilities so that the moral calculation around war is a little... Sometimes, with the, sometimes with the mouse, they click the wrong icon, and, and that's a, that can be really hard on a village overseas, but... Or, or an early send. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, same thing. <laughs> uh, ooh, wow, that was supposed to be yellow house, not blue house. Right. Oh, boy. I think we, we just did a lot of stuff. We built these really open-ended platforms, and they got away from us. And we were a little too optimistic with how humans work. The, well, this the is su- the techno- does technology surprise me? No, I'm, I'm no, really impressed. I, I think too. You know, you talk to people from the giant, giant tech firms, and bless them, they are in a world that is all inclusive. And I, I can see that happen because we work at a small company, we run it, and it can feel like it's a whole lot to me. I, I think there's that, and I think that look, here's the thing. There are thousands and thousands of people that are pretty, are, are pre, you know, doing a lot of sort of self-evaluation, but man, they have a lot of stock. Yeah, that's right. No, <laughs> no, I mean, there's... That's um, real. <laughs> All right. Um, so, I mean, we could take this one of two ways, right? We either can say, okay, you know what, 2019 is just sort of accepting the fact that we're all doomed. Or yeah. is there, I mean, give me, give me, cheer me up here, Paul. We use, I just use the World War One analogy. Well, you got to help me out. First of all, what we're going to see with technology... As we know, in 2019, there's just more. There's going to be more. Like more, oh, like eight more revelations. Well, n- well, there's that, right? Yeah. There'll be more. First of all, there'll be there'll be more hard drives. There'll be more cloud services. Yeah. There'll be more uh, apps that are released yeah. and more web things. Can Google. I throw out a headline? Yeah, what's your headline? headline? February seventh, 2019. Mm. Investigation reveals that Mark Zuckerberg was in your house two weeks ago. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I used to feel this, yeah, this is the big one. This is, because that thing, by which I mean Facebook and WhatsApp and Instagram, and who, I don't even know what else they own, became the dominating presence. It, 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 they sought to define what the internet and technology would be to everyone in the world, and they achieved that goal this year. I think that next year, here's the thing, Facebook is an enormous platform that's very, very successful. It's also got WhatsApp and Instagram. For many people, it is the internet, and it's where they communicate and talk to their friends. And view it as the they internet. view it as the internet, and you're not going to just button this up. This is going to be a continual negotiation. I think it will end with some compliance on, on Facebook side, a lot of a more transparency, hopefully, and probably government regulation. I think that's how this resolves, whether that takes a year or longer. You know, one of the key components of of a, of a crime is intent like yeah you can be negligent well this is what you can be reckless what got fuzzy this year is intent i mean do we have this sort of cabal of just sinister people sitting around a big boardroom table no i think you have something so big and people with very ambitious moonshot goals and the tools to do things that are bad for society indirectly and when you add all that up you get something that's pretty dangerous and it doesn't even know how to police itself, and it doesn't even know what it did. It's like if somebody took your brain and put another brain in, and that brain ran around in your body, and then you, you come back and they're like, they put your brain in, you're like, what happened? It's like, I don't know, I don't know. I mean, I, I think that's right. I, I think I think they overestimated their ability to see the whole picture. Right? Well, everybody they underestimated the power of the thing. I think there's probably some law, or something, but everybody, you know, there's the Dunning-Kruger effect and all this stuff. Everyone assumes that they are an ethical genius, including you and me. You can be successful and still be ethical. We couldn't be in business unless this was the primary conversation, because it's very important to both of us. That yes. that I want I want to earn that respect, and I want to feel that I am a, a that I'm adding something to the world. That's important, right? Yes. But if you came here and you sat with a dental tech and went through every decision you've ever made, you would find some stuff where you'd be like, well, "That was pretty self-serving, wasn't it?" Yeah. Yeah, and it, it's. And so, like, the dental picks are out. Yeah, that's and, real. And that's real. And and what you're finding is that that self-image of we're going to connect everyone in the world and it's going to be beautiful and it's going to be wonderful. And then, yeah, we broke some eggs along the way, one of them being Myanmar. But we broke some eggs, but, you know, we're still making a hell of an omelet. And people were yeah. like, I don't want eggs. Yeah. I want hash browns today. Yeah. And, and it just doesn't look good and it doesn't feel good. And it sucks because... Everybody thought that they were saving the world, and then it actually turns out that they might have been destroying it. And no one, there are very few tools.
fools in culture. It's not like you can go read a book on like, hey, you thought you were saving the world, but you destroyed it. Well, but they also they gave the world this thing, and there was an optimism about how the world works. Well, making making stuff is wonderful. Making stuff wonderful and empowering others is wonderful, but at the end of the day, when you empower others, you give them power, right? And and it turns out that some, yeah, they do they do use it to organize the, the charity function, mm -hmm. but many use it to wield their agenda, and their agenda is often very biased because it's their own and their own perspective and their own their own biases and, and, and the like. You know what's tricky too, right? Is that the it doesn't matter. Ninety nine good acts, but one great one that is indirectly or directly really negative, the 99 get forgotten because that is just how humans are. We don't, and that's not an excuse. It's just if you drop poison into the water supply, people forget the water. They focus True. on the poison. Honestly, and look, you're a media guy also. It's kind of boring. Yeah. The hot mess of people throwing shit at each other yeah, it's is what people stare at. Very the annoying. fact that 80 yeah. out of the 90 invitees to a charity function showed up is just boring. No, that's and, right. And, and What's interesting is a good fist fight at the corner. I mean, that's real. I want to draw another parallel. Why don't we go talk about the good stuff that's happened? Well, we think we can get there. Okay. Our founding fathers, Paul, could have written like a two pager that said, you, you know, human beings intrinsically are good people, <laughs> and just all of you get along and just make sure that you pay taxes so everybody, you know, takes care of each other. I love the two pager. Just like Thomas two Jefferson in yeah. Google Docs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they actually had, I mean, the way we're structured, it's like, well, okay, you got to put a piece over there to balance that out over here and just make sure this guy doesn't get out of control. Mm -hmm. And so put a piece of control here. So the checks and balances are, in my view, if people are so optimistic about the human being, you know, nature, human nature and this. It's actually a deeply, deeply cynical framework. It's very suspicious. It's very suspicious because the power and money and greed kick in. And so how do you balance that out, right? And so, you know, lifetime appointment to the Supreme Court, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Hey, Rick. Yes, Paul. There's a lot of really interesting things that are happening with technology this year. And Constantly. Yeah, and we try to keep up on them. We try to build systems that are really stable, that are going to be in it for the long haul, but we also try to make sure that if something new is happening out there and it's going to save you a lot of money and time, we try to stay on it. Yep. And so that kind of defines our culture. And we really want to hear from people. We want to hear from people who work here, and we want to hear from people who want to work with us. We have a great team of engineers and designers and product managers, and we can build just about anything. Frankly, we've been tested on that in the last couple of years. We've come up pretty well. We've built entire email clients. We've built financial trading systems. We've built unusual forms of authentication and logins for giant organizations. Like, really tricky stuff. Uh, yeah. Educational platforms. And platforms is the big one for us. So if you need anything, look at Postlight. Yep. Hello at postlight.com. So, tying this back into the future of technology, Paul, especially in 2019, mm -hmm. are there some good things happening? Will there be some good things happening? Well, we're going to see the first 5G network. That'll be pretty cool. Okay, so this is a good point. Tech, raw tech, unapplied, There's, it just keeps marching. Oh, uh, yeah. The process, it, it just keeps going. More processors on the floor, faster computers. I mean, your phone, mm -hmm. uh, you have a Google Pixel 3. Oh, yeah. It's going to be able to report what I'm doing to China five times faster. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, we're going optimistic now. Yeah. Don't dig around. Uh, I mean, you took a picture. We were in a bar. Yeah, you took a picture dark. at night. You take pictures and they look great. It was kind of terrifying. Well, so because, by the way, when you took that picture, someone in China touched it up in Photoshop and sent it back to your phone. Possibly true, and then, then they save it, and then they, that's how they build the profile. The thing that is real, uh, machine learning is real. Machine learning creating interesting new consumer experiences, because that's what that night mode is. Isn't that still tied to... Taking my data, data and making like you no, know, that's a tied, coleslaw out of it. That's tied to taking 90 photos in a fast sequence and then using the little bit of motion in the camera and connecting it to a giant machine learning model and saying, hmm, this is what they're intending it to be and turning and enhancing certain parts of 
very, very quickly and suddenly yeah. you have a really good picture. So great images. Great images, different kinds of search experiences, new, yeah. just new stuff, like new ideas yeah. and weirdness is happening out there. Right. And that's fun. Right. You know what I would say about machine learning is that all through the history of computing as like a pop culture thing, like not the earliest days, but say the last 30 years, the operating system was your core interface to the silicon. Like you, you buy this device, and it, it can do something. And what you put on it is an operating system of software. And that's the space between you and the computer is filled up with the operating system, and that's how you access the computer. Machine learning kind of gets in there in the middle. And it's a new space in between where you're feeding it signal, and it's using the silicone, and it's coming back out, and it's using the network sometimes too, and it's coming back out with data and responses. It's not, you used to be you would move your mouse, and, and you would say enhance, or night mode, or whatever, but now you kind of figure stuff out as you go along, mm -hmm. and the fact that there is any kind of new third space, it's been 40 years, yeah. is very, very interesting. Okay, is that 2019? I think it's gonna be, that's like the next five years. I'm pretty sure machine learning applications in the next five years. Okay. At least. How do, uh, give me a neutralizer for everything that's happening on social media. Well, there's always the argument that, I don't know, conversations, podcasts, people talking to one Conversations are terrible, we've seen yeah, that. This is bad. Podcasts are good. Podcasts are gonna have a big moment next year, okay. that's real. Regulation? Does it get really positive and optimistic once it's regulated? No, no, you can't fix people. Yeah, let me ask you this. Why didn't Pinterest go to shit? Why didn't Etsy go to shit? They were really locked into a certain form. Okay. You know, like Etsy, first of all, I think Etsy always had really good community moderation. If you show up a lot of swap okay. tickets at Etsy. Pause there, moderation. Yeah. Community moderation. I think you don't have a choice. We have none of that on the platforms today that well, are causing chaos. None yeah, of, not none really. Of, I mean, I mean it's reached a scale where they can't do That's it. That's the problem, you have like technical pornography. Right. But it's not about like. That was needed? Probably. You know, you, you just, you need forward looking people who are like, hey, don't do that. Is, is the internet part of a civil society? Well, obviously now it is. Yes. Social in media. In fact, it's in, in, in a key sort of System. It, it's dr it drives civil society. Twitter right. drives how the media interacts. With, I mean, it's like everything is connected. Facebook is, is a huge part of a civil society. It defines family and community for a lot of people. Um, it's connected to education. Like, it's, it's infinite. So we have all kinds of regulations and rules about content. They're content. coming. What choice do you have? Like, it feels, it happens so fast, and I think also the ethos of tech is so anti-regulation that it feels almost impossible. Yeah, but I, I think I think numerous red lines have been crossed. Well, it always, it feels really impossible and then one day that one congressman sits down with somebody and it's like, we're gonna do it this way. And yeah. they go, yeah, okay. And then suddenly the laws pass and it, suddenly it's possible. Yeah. So, and a good example there is that uh, pro-Nazi speech has never been allowed on Twitter in Germany because Germany banned pro-Nazi speech. Period. Yeah, and so when Twitter wanted to expand and succeed in that market, it had no choice. Right. Okay, Paul. So, yes. so far, we, you know, we're looking ahead and like, hey, what's what's good, positive stuff coming in tech? And we have ended frankly, up explaining remedy. No, but I'll tell you, right. frankly, uh, a mature government involvement in tech would be a wonderful thing. Very positive. Well, is there anything <laughs> happening? This government does. Is there ha anything happening mm. out there that's just positive, like just ground up, and we need government to tell it to behave itself in tech? Everything's getting cheaper and faster. But you know, you know what's a killer here is that it's really hard to launch new things. I think this is what I'm struggling with. Like, because Facebook and Twitter and everybody else are kind of the conduits for broadcasting new information and new ideas, this is, so let's say I want to start a not-for-profit and get the word out. I make my website, I accept donations. Now, I have a horrible struggle ahead of me. How much money am I gonna spend on Facebook? What kind of events am I gonna do? Do I have more tweets on Twitter? Like, there used to be more free flow and more chance to play and kind of hack around, but you couldn't get to this level of broadcast. You couldn't hit tens of millions of people efficiently. Right. Mm -hmm. And now we've got that. And that maybe that's a really good thing when it all, when, when the final reckoning is done, but it's just hard because everything is harder to do. 
the scale is bigger, things take a long time. But that said, the tooling's wonderful. You can build more software faster than you ever could before. Right. You know, programming languages are great, hard drives are cheap. I mean, if you wanted to go build something, you can go do it. Oh my God. There's opportunities there today. There are drones and there are cameras and everything is, I mean, you ever been on the website Cloud Supply? No. It's magical, it's hardware. It's like a Kickstarter, but for the nerdiest thing. Mm. So a Linux system that runs on the Risk Five open source chip, or a network storage device that runs all open software, and you can plug little disks into it. And wow, this is really nerdy. It's really nerdy. It's really people are making and distributing and selling thousands of units of electronic devices that are for a very niche audience, but they're finding that audience. I mean, that's great, right? Like, there's somebody still hacking. Not just somebody. I mean, it's it's gotten cheaper and easier, and there's distribution, and there are frameworks, and you know, Crowd Supply is pretty positive. It takes a very modest cut. It is designed to help people with big, exciting technology ideas make them real and help them find an audience. Right. And I'm sure that if we dig into this, the forums, there will be 700 things that are bad about Crowd Supply. But something out there has been hacked. Yeah, I mean, play. maybe this is maybe this is the positive version of, of our world is one where you're able to make interesting things and find a medium-sized audience. And maybe we've internalized giant platform needs too much. Right. I don't know, Rich. I mean, who's doing good stuff? All right, so here. This is really cool. Now, I, you know, drones are cool. They're Jeez. damn cool. I will say, though, every time someone sells a startup, they get a new drone. They're cool. They are. They're just cool. It's like, okay, I made a startup. You can now manage your accounting a little bit better. But man, now I can fly. Yeah, that's so right. I'm going to fly. I'm, I'm a bird. It's why people use that falcons. <laughs> right. It's, it's a modern day falcon, yeah. right? So there is a startup out there called Zipline. Okay. And what Zipline does is get use drones okay. to get medicine to remote places. Mm. Now, that sounds, well, that's weird. Why would you? That. Well, everybody heard about the whole Amazon thing, right? Like, we're going to deliver the package through the drone. Through the drone to your front step, et cetera, et cetera. What these guys are doing is they're using drone technology to get vaccines, to get blood supply, for transfusions, um, to places that don't have either roads or facilities or even runways so planes can land to bring them supplies. Right. Uh, and they're using these drones uh, to get the stuff over there. Now, mm -hmm. I don't know a lot about this company. I think it's a great story. And I think what's most interesting about it is this probably didn't come up, you know, as a product of three guys in a cocktail bar in New York City saying, I've got the next billion dollar idea. No, that's right. Right. And that's incredibly reassuring in light of just everything that's going on. Because what a lot of this is, is people lose perspective entirely because they were so driven by money. You know, it's a huge deal in, in really remote communities is the ability to charge devices. Like, I remember meeting a guy who was I used to affiliate it, I think with the State Department of the UN, but it was like, he was getting solar charging stations so that small-scale entrepreneurs, you could come and charge your phone. Yeah. Because it was hard to get stable electricity. So cool. And the person who was going to thrive there was kind of like, already usually had a little bit of a hustle. Right, and they had to pay for it. So it's like a couple bucks a week, and they would get to charge the station. They would charge people.